Hello everyone! Are you ready to take a trip down memory lane? Today we're exploring the magic and mayhem of the Muppets. We've got 107 facts lined up about all your favorite fuzzy friends from behind the scenes secrets to surprising trivia. So without further ado, let's hop into our Muppet themed time machine and get started. Number 1. The Muppets were created by Jim Henson, a puppeteer, artist, and filmmaker. Henson first created the Muppets in the 1950s for a local television show in Washington, D.C. called Sam and Friends. Number 2. The term Muppet is a combination of the words marionette and puppet. Henson coined the term to describe his unique puppetry style which combined the use of marionettes and hand puppets. Number 3. Jim Henson's first Muppet was a rat-like creature named Icky Gunk. However, the first Muppet to gain popularity was Kermit the Frog, who made his debut on Sam and Friends. Number 4. Kermit the Frog was initially made from an old coat belonging to Henson's mother, and a pair of ping pong balls. The character has since become one of the most recognizable figures in pop culture. Number 5. The Muppets made their national television debut on The Jimmy Dean Show in 1957. Rolf the Dog was the first Muppet to become a regular on a network show, appearing alongside country singer Jimmy Dean. Number 6. The Muppets gained widespread popularity in the 1970s with The Muppet Show, a variety show that featured a cast of Muppet characters and celebrity guest stars. The show ran for five seasons from 1976 to 1981. Number 7. The Muppet Show was initially rejected by American networks, who believed that Muppets would only appeal to a child audience. However, the show was picked up by British producer Lou Grade and became a hit, eventually being syndicated back to the United States. Number 8. The Muppets have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. They received the honor in 2012, marking their significant contribution to the entertainment industry. Number 9. The Muppets have been involved in various forms of media, including television, film, music, and online content. They've starred in multiple television series, over a dozen feature films, and numerous specials. Number 10. The Muppets have a long history of collaborations with other artists and celebrities. They've shared the screen with stars like Elton John, Julie Andrews, Alice Cooper, and many more. Number 11. The Muppets are known for their musical performances. They've released multiple albums, and their song Rainbow Connection from the Muppet Movie was nominated for an Academy Award. Number 12. Kermit's version of the Rainbow Connection reached number 25 on the Billboard Hot 100 in November 1979. The song remained in the top 40 for 7 weeks. Number 13. The Muppets are owned by the Walt Disney Company. Disney acquired the Muppets in 2004, and they've since appeared in various Disney productions. Number 14. The Muppets have a dedicated museum exhibit at the Museum of the Moving Image in New York. The exhibit, called the Jim Henson Exhibition, features over 300 objects related to Henson's career, including Muppets, costumes, and props. Number 15. The Muppets have been used to promote various causes. For example, they've been involved in campaigns for environmental conservation and have appeared in public service announcements for UNICEF. Number 16. The Muppets have had a significant cultural impact. They've been referenced in various forms of media and their influence can be seen in other puppet-based productions. Number 17. Kermit the Frog has a feminine alter ego named Kermina. Occasionally, Kermit would don a blonde wig to transform into this character. Number 18. The original pilot for The Muppet Show had a rather surprising title. It was called The Muppet Show – Sex and Violence. This was a satirical take on the variety show format, and the title was meant to be a tongue-in-cheek reference to the criticisms often leveled at television programming. Number 19. The first line of the episode is an announcer saying, Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the end of sex and violence on television, followed by Crazy Harry blowing up the sign using a giant Wile E. Coyote style detonator. Number 20. The original host of The Muppet Show was not Kermit, but a character named Nigel, the orchestra conductor. However, Nigel was deemed too wimpy to host the show, and Kermit took over the role. Number 21. Miss Piggy made her first appearance on Herb Alpert's 1974 TV special Herb Alpert and the TJB. Number 22. 
Miss Piggy's backstory is quite tragic according to her puppeteer Frank Oz. She had a rough childhood which shaped her into the diva we know today. Number 23. Oz stated that Miss Piggy grew up in a small town in Iowa and that her father had died while she was young, leaving her alone with a mother who wasn't particularly nice to her. As a result of her turbulent childhood, Miss Piggy had to enter beauty contests to survive. Miss Piggy's full name is Miss Piggy Lee. This is a nod to the famous actress Peggy Lee. Number 25. The Muppets Statler and Waldorf are named after two New York City hotels, the Statler Hilton, now the Hotel Pennsylvania, and the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. Number 26. During its six-year run, no celebrity was allowed to be on The Muppet Show more than once. This rule ensured a variety of guest stars on the show. Number 27. Guest stars on The Muppet Show could request to appear in a scene with their favorite Muppet. Miss Piggy was the most requested Muppet, with Animal coming in a close second. Number 28. Gonzo made his first appearance as Snarl, the cigar box frackle, in the 1970 TV special The Great Santa Claus Switch. Number 29. The character of Animal was inspired by Keith Moon of The Who. Moon's wild and energetic drumming style is reflected in Animal's character. Number 30. The largest Muppet is Thog, who stands at over nine and a half feet tall and is four feet wide. Thog is a gentle giant who often towers over the other Muppets. Number 31. Thog made his first appearance as well in the 1970 special The Great Santa Claus Switch. Number 32. Almost all the Muppets are left-handed. This is because most Muppet performers are right-handed, so they operate the head with their right hand and the left hand of the puppet with their left hand. Number 33. Miss Piggy is a New York Times best-selling author. Miss Piggy's Guide to Life was a bestseller after its release in 1981. Number 34. Jim Henson's final performance as Kermit the Frog was on the May 4th, 1990 episode of The Arsenio Hall Show. Two weeks later, Henson tragically passed away from organ failure, caused by Streptococcus pyogenes. Number 35. Jim Henson reportedly created over 2,000 Muppets during his career. This number includes all of the characters created for The Muppet Show, Sesame Street, Fraggle Rock, and various other Muppet productions. Number 36. The Muppets have a long history of making guest appearances on late night talk shows. In the 1960s, during their Muppet Show fame, several characters made guest appearances on talk shows. Rolf the Dog and Kermit the Frog were the most popular and made frequent appearances on The Ed Sullivan Show. Number 37. Jim Henson produced a Muppet sketch series on Saturday Night Live that only ran for one season. Called The Land of Gorch, it depicted an uncouth family of royal Muppets that interacted with Saturday Night Live cast members. However, the sketch series was not popular with critics or with the cast members. Number 38. Stars like John Belushi were frustrated with having to share screen time with the characters, which Belushi called the mucking Muppets. Number 39. Kermit the Frog has an honorary doctorate of amphibious letters from Southampton College in New York. He received this in 1996 for his work promoting environmental awareness and even gave the graduating class's commencement speech. Number 40. Oscar the Grouch was originally orange when he first appeared on Sesame Street in 1969. However, he was changed to green because it worked better on TV. According to Oscar, he turned green when he went on vacation to Swamp Mushy Muddy and hadn't bathed since. Number 41. You can get your own custom-made Muppet from the Jim Henson Workshop. Number 42. Kermit the Frog was born on March 2nd, 1955. He was born in a swamp with green skin and a red collar. Number 43. The Muppets have been used for educational purposes. Some schools use them as teaching tools because their messages are so important. You can be whoever you want when you grow up, never give up on your dreams, and take care of each other, along with many others. Number 44. A who's who of Hollywood stars and musical legends guest hosted The Muppet Show over the years, from Julie Andrews and Steve Martin to Gilda Radner, Harry Belafonte, and Raquel Welch. Even members of the cast of Star Wars showed up for a 1980 episode. But in the early days, The Muppet Show had difficulties attracting guest hosts. 
but a 1976 guest hosting appearance by famed actress and singer Rita Moreno, which won her an Emmy, and an early 1978 guest hosting gig by ballet legend Rudolf Nureyev garnered such great responses that other stars clamored to appear on the show. Number 45. Kermit the Frog and Miss Piggy met on The Muppet Show, and speculation about their relationship has run rampant ever since. The pair are like the Muppet version of Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston, two huge stars whose love story fans can't get enough of, regardless of whether or not they're actually together. And that's the question, are they actually together? The answer, it appears, is that it's complicated. Number 46. The song Manamana from The Muppet Show became famous on the show, but it actually has a more adult origin. Penned by Italian composer Piero Umiliani in 1968, the tune first appeared in an Italian movie released that same year, called Sweden, Heaven and Hell. The film is a documentary described as focusing on different aspects of sexuality in Sweden, such as lesbian nightclubs, porn films, the swinging lifestyle of married couples, and the sex education of teenagers. As Slate notes, the scene that the song plays over in the film follows a bevy of statuesque fur-swaddled blondes as they make their way through the snow to a sauna, then cuts to the same women clad only in carelessly draped towels, giggling as they soak up the heat. Number 47. Throughout their nearly seven-decade existence, the Muppets have been regarded as a staple of the entertainment industry and popular culture in the United States and English-speaking areas around the world. They've been recognized by various cultural institutions and organizations, including the American Film Institute, the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and both Academies of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and Television Arts and Sciences. More on that in a minute. Number 48. The principal characters of The Muppet Show and subsequent media include Kermit the Frog, Miss Piggy, Fozzie Bear, Gonzo, Rolf the Dog, Scooter, Rizzo the Rat, Pepe the King Prawn, Dr. Bunsen Honeydew, Beaker, Statler and Waldorf, The Swedish Chef, Sam Eagle, Camilla the Chicken, Walter, and The Electric Mayhem. Number 49. The Muppets are currently performed by a core cast of six principal puppeteers. Matt Vogel, Eric Jacobson, Dave Goles, Bill Beretta, David Rudman, and Peter Linz, with the occasional ensemble of additional Muppet performers. Number 50. Jim Henson wasn't always interested in puppets. He considered himself an artist and a designer when he was younger, not a puppeteer. Then, as a senior in high school, he stumbled upon puppetry when it was necessary for a television job. Henson said, When I was a kid, I never saw a puppet show. I never played with puppets or had any interest in them. It was just a means to an end. Number 51. As the Muppets grew in popularity, the characters were localized for international markets where languages other than English are spoken. For example, in most of Latin America, Kermit is known as Rana, while in Spain, he's called Gustavo. His name in Arabic is Kamel, which is a common Arabic name meaning perfect. And in Hungary, he goes by the name Brecky. Number 52. In 1979, the Muppets movie follows Kermit as he embarks on a cross-country trip to Hollywood while being pursued by an evil restaurateur who wants to enlist Kermit as a spokesperson for his edible frog legs. Number 53. In order to film the opening scene of Kermit the Frog in a Swamp, Jim Henson had to spend an entire day underwater inside of a specially designed 50-gallon diving bell, accompanied by a monitor and an oxygen tube. He then stuck his arm through a rubber sleeve to control Kermit while remaining hidden. This scene took five entire days to film. Number 54. Three Kermits were used in the opening Rainbow Connection scene, one being mechanical. Number 55. The story of Kermit heading to Hollywood in the Muppet movie was written as an allegory for Jim Henson's own rise to fame. Number 56. Henson wanted to use the film's large budget to push the limits of puppetry and do things that nobody had ever done before, and I'd say he accomplished that for sure. Number 57. One of the big feats accomplished with this budget was the scene in which Kermit rides a bicycle. Still blows my mind how they pulled that off. Number 58. Fozzie driving a car was another one of these higher budget gags, and it was accomplished by having someone drive the car via remote control from the trunk, while using a TV monitor to guide their steering. The puppeteers lay on the floor and couldn't see anything. Number 59. The Studebaker that Fozzie drives now resides in the Studebaker National Museum in South Bend, Indiana. Number 60. 
Towards the end of the Muppet movie, Animal eats Dr. Bunsen Honeydew's Instagrow pills and balloons through the roof of an old wooden building, scaring off Doc Hopper and his cronies. Wanting that moment to be as real as possible, Henson refused to use camera trickery or a miniature set to create the scene, forcing his crew to construct a gigantic animal head for real. Number 61. The Muppet movie featured 250 Muppets on screen at the same time. This made up the largest puppet cast ever assembled on film. Number 62. This scene required the production to enlist the help of 137 additional puppeteers from the Los Angeles Guild of the Puppeteers of America. Miraculously, it only took one day to film. Number 63. Statler and Waldorf were supposed to have a subplot where they followed the main action around and heckled, but this was cut from the final movie. Number 64. In 2009, 30 years after the film's release, the Muppet movie was deemed culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant by the Library of Congress and thus selected for preservation in the National Film Registry. Number 65. 1981 saw the release of the second Muppets film, titled The Great Muppet Caper. The film followed the Muppets to London to prevent a jewel heist and constitutes Jim Henson's directorial debut. Number 66. The title of The Great Muppet Caper could have been different, as the film had some less inspired working titles such as Muppet Mania or even The Muppet Movie 2. Jim Henson enlisted friends, family, and staff members to help come up with a title for the movie, with the winning title suggested by Henson's 19-year-old daughter, Lisa. Number 67. The scene with Kermit's dancing shadow in The Great Muppet Caper took an excruciating 43 takes to get right. Lining up a dancing puppet with an independently moving shadow proved to be quite the difficult task. Number 68. A full body Miss Piggy was used in the movie not once, not twice, but three times. There was a scene in a supper club, one during the motorcycle chase, and the last time was when she dove into a pool during her fantasy. Number 69. Speaking of the pool scene, this one was particularly difficult to shoot. Communication issues were abound, as everything from lights to cameramen to speakers and monitors had to be underwater. Number 70. This scene was, coincidentally, the first time the Muppets swam underwater. Number 71. The bike riding scene was possible thanks to radio-controlled bikes, marionette rigging, and attaching multiple bikes so they could stand up on their own. Brian Henson even did some pulling using an oversized tricycle. Number 72. In 1984, the third Muppet movie was released, titled The Muppets Take Manhattan. This film follows Kermit and his buddies as they encounter financial issues while attempting to stage a Broadway show. Number 73. The kennel at which Rolf is working in The Muppets Take Manhattan has several labeled cages, two of which are labeled Jim and Frank in honor of the film's creators, Jim Henson and Frank Oz. Number 74. While filming the jogging scene in a park, there was a camera problem that delayed shooting. During the downtime, a little boy came over and started talking to Kermit, unaware that Jim Henson was operating him. This led to an impromptu performance by Kermit for a whole gaggle of kids who had gathered around. So sweet. Number 75. Joan Rivers and Frank Oz, as Miss Piggy, needed some liquid courage to get a take right. They requested two gin and tonics each after some less than inspiring takes, and after they finished their drinks, they got the take that ended up in the final film. Number 76. Jim Henson had said that he'd never do a Muppet movie that wasn't rated G. Number 77. The Muppets Take Manhattan contains the first appearance of the Muppet Babies, who appear in a dream sequence in which Miss Piggy imagines what it could have been like if she and Kermit had grown up together. The animated series based on this sequence premiered only two months after The Muppets Take Manhattan was released, expanding the Muppet universe. Number 78. Episodes of The Muppet Babies run for 30 minutes, so the show was often aired in 60 or even 90 minute blocks. Following the cancellation of Garbage Pail Kids, CBS had nothing else to fill empty space in the schedule with, leading to extended airtime for the Muppet Babies. Number 79. This series ended up being a huge success and ran for eight seasons. Number 80. In 1992, The Muppet Christmas Carol was released and was the first Muppet movie made since Jim Henson's passing in 1990. Number 81. Jim Henson's son, Brian Henson, took up the directorial mantle for Christmas Carol. Number 82. The role of Kermit was handed down to Steve Whitmire, who said that he was very nervous about taking over the iconic character. However, he had a dream where Jim Henson spoke to him and reassured him that the feeling would pass. This gave him the push he needed to play the part. Number 83. 
Prior to production, Sir Michael Caine let Brian Henson know that he was going to play this movie like he was working with the Royal Shakespeare Company. He will never do anything Muppety. He is going to play Scrooge as if it is an utterly dramatic role, and there are no puppets around him. And Henson thought that this was exactly right. Number 84. Christmas Carol is the first Muppet movie that doesn't feature Kermit the Frog in the lead role. Number 85. The Ghost of Christmas Past was a special puppet operated inside of a tank of water, and was then green screened into the movie to make it seem like it was floating. Number 86. The 2011 film, The Muppets, was a passion project for actor Jason Segel, who co-wrote the script. Segel, a lifelong Muppets fan, was inspired to pitch the idea for a new Muppet movie after working with puppets in the 2008 film Forgetting Sarah Marshall. The film was a success and helped revive interest in the Muppet franchise. Number 87. After the movie was done, Jason Segel got to keep the Muppet version of himself. Number 88. The Muppets was the first Muppet production to win an Oscar. Brett McKenzie won Best Original Song for the tune Man or Muppet. Well, which one are you? Number 89. This was the first theatrical Muppet film that didn't feature Frank Oz. Number 90. Of course, the Muppets made sure to only use old-school Muppets techniques for all of the Muppet effects. CGI and other modern trickery would take away from that classic charm. Number 91. One particular joke was cut by Disney before the Muppets was finished. Kermit, speaking to the telethon audience, says, This went so well, we're bringing back the Muppet Show this fall on ABC. Disney's note to the filmmakers was, Nice try. Number 92. Dave Grohl, superstar musician, has a cameo as Animal, the single human character in the Muppet knockoff group known as the Muppets. Number 93. Since then, one more Muppets movie has made it to the big screen. Muppets Most Wanted in 2014. Number 94. This was the first Muppets movie to keep a sort of continuity with its predecessor. They make reference to events from the 2011 Muppets movie, whereas all other Muppet movies start fresh so they can give characters convenient backstories and motivations. Number 95. The Muppets also got a few more TV shows going since then. There was a one-season sitcom simply known as The Muppets, shot in the mockumentary style of shows like The Office. Number 96. There was also Muppets Now, which was more improvisational and focused on the idea of streaming. Number 97. The latest Muppets project to hit the scene is The Muppets Mayhem, all about the Electric Mayhem Band, aka The Muppets House Band. Number 98. This band has been around since the very first episode. Remember Sex and Violence? The band has also appeared in every Muppets movie. Number 99. However, Zoot is the only member of the band still being played by his original Muppet performer, Dave Goals. Number 100. The band consists of Dr. Teeth on the keyboard, Janice on guitar, Sergeant Floyd Pepper on the bass, Zoot on the sax, Lips on the trumpet, and Animal on the drums. Number 101. The Muppets have also made their mark in the world of video games. They've starred in various games across multiple platforms, further expanding their reach and influence. Number 102. The first ever console game based on the Muppets was 1983's Pigs in Space for the Atari 2600. It was essentially a Space Invaders knockoff and, well, it looked like an Atari game. Number 103. The Muppets also cashed in on the mascot kart racer craze with Muppet Race Mania for the PlayStation. This was a big deal for folks who didn't like Mario or Crash Bandicoot. Number 104. And speaking of cashing in on other popular games, there was a Muppets pinball game for the Game Boy Advance, and a Muppets party game a la Mario Party called Muppets Party Cruise for the GameCube and PS2. Number 105. In 2017, the voice of Kermit the Frog, Steve Whitmire, was fired by Disney. Apparently, this was done because of unacceptable business conduct, whatever that means. Upon further investigation, it was revealed that Whitmire had given character notes during the sitcom Muppets reboot, and Disney had seen them as disrespectful. Number 106. Matt Vogel, a longtime Muppets performer, took over as Kermit. Number 107. In Season 5 of the reality TV show The Masked Singer, Kermit the Frog was revealed as one of the performers, singing from inside of a gigantic snail costume. Well, there you have it, Muppet fans. 107 facts about your favorite fuzzy friends. From the swamp to the stars, the Muppets have brought us joy, laughter, and a whole lot of unforgettable moments. So keep those memories alive. 
In the words of Kermit the Frog, life's like a movie, write your own ending. And in the words of me, life's like a YouTube video, you want people to subscribe. So make sure you click that button, like, and give us a comment on what you'd like to see next. Did you enjoy our video? What facts do you think we missed? Let us know in the comments down below. And while you're there, like and subscribe to see more great videos every week. And remember, Frederator loves you.